Hello friends and welcome. Uh, forgive the sound quality. I tried my microphone. My microphone's not really syncing and hooking up well this morning. I tried my headset. My headset's not. So I'm going to go ahead and make a video um, to post. And then I'll try to do one again later this week that has a little bit better sound quality. But we'll at least get you a nice little, get yourself um, moving, but also food for thought. Here in Walla Walla and much of the uh, West, right, we are in a heat uh, wave. And it's going to be about 100 degrees here today in Walla Walla. So this is when I say that it's time for us to not move in a really strong way. Um, in order to just create balance so that we don't overheat ourselves. We might be like, yeah, but 20 minutes of like super strong work, that doesn't overheat me. But it's not just your body temperature at the time, right? You can still accumulate heat um, in your body, in your digestive system, and it can still end up accumulating, 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 and over time you end up with what's called a pitta imbalance, an Ayurveda, um, and it does affect you. If you're someone who gets really hot or has heat stroke or heat, uh, um, exhaustion. Um, I don't always have that, but I get rashes and I have a fungus in the summer often on my body. Um, I flush really easily. Um, I drink a ton of water, but unless I add electrolytes, I just uh, uh, pee back out and I get dehydrated. Um, so there's all kinds of things that I could go into, but um, this is the physical practice, so I'll try to leave that where it's at, even though I love to talk about this stuff. And let's move our bodies a little bit. So we're going to start, if it's available, cross-legged. You can always support knees with blocks. I am on blocks under my buttocks for a little bit of height. Long spine, palms up or down on the thighs, and close the eyes. Then just take a couple of moments and just tune into your body. So we're very used to having artificial air, yeah? You're probably sitting inside an air-conditioned building um, and slightly removed from what's happening in the natural world. So still tune in, even though you're in that AC, to where your body is at. And just imagining that that natural world does affect us even if we try to change what's happening in nature. And it also depends on when you do this. Is it early in the morning or late at night when there's not as much heat? Is it during the middle of the day if you're touching upon it. Of course, we're softening any muscles that might be really tense, taking note of any places that have sensitivities, tenderness. And then bring the awareness into that belly, that softening belly, and as that belly softens, we begin to breathe a little deeper. This is wonderful. And go ahead and open the eyes when you're ready. First, you're going to have the arms down by the side, palms turned down initially. Shoulders, if they're all the way rounded forward, rounded back. If they're all the way shoved back, bring them a little forward, right? Where's that happy medium? Shoulder blades definitely move down gently, but we're not boxing them, right? We sometimes talk about boxing the shoulders down. It's that nice, gentle place. Turn the palms up and inhale, reach the arms up. We're going to go over to the right first and do our lateral stretch. Inhale up. If you haven't done much movement, be so gentle and kind. Exhale if you've been sitting down all day, nice, slow, and gentle. Inhale back up. We're going to turn to the right. We're not going to stay there, just so you know. Inhale back to center. We're going to turn to the left. Inhale, arms up. And then if it's okay, exhale, just drop your arms. And then we're going to do that again. Let's put our other shin in front. Arms out. Inhale, reach those arms out and up. Exhaling to the left. Inhaling, arms up. Exhaling to the right. Inhaling, arms up. Twisting to the left. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, twisting to the right. Arms up. And exhale, just drop your arms. 
And then we're going to, from here, it's not going to be over forward fold. We're going to transition the hands and knees. So you're just going to go ahead and bring your hands down and just slowly start to walk one hand a little forward and then another. And get pretty far. Pretty far. What is that? Um, I'm about probably a little beyond a ruler length in front of my legs or so. And then if it's available, come on a different way if you have knee injuries or whatnot. I'm going to go ahead and reach my arms out, plant my palms down, and I'm going to give my, my buttocks a boost up, right, and transition to come up, uncrossing the shins, and coming into tabletop. Boom. There. Feel free to pad your knees. And from there, shoulders are under over top of wrists, hips are over top of knees-ish. Inhale, shoulder blades down, back over towards the pelvis. Exhale, pull the belly up, and round back. Inhale, the pelvis move down. I said shoulder blades, I meant to change that, sorry. <laughs> Reach the chest, works out, ripples through the spine. And then exhale, pull the crown hip points up to the ceiling and let that round your spine. Another way you can see this from the tailbone. Inhale, the tailbone reaches up towards the ceiling and it ripples through the spine until the crown of the head does as well. And then let your tailbone move down to the ground and again it ripples through the spine until the crown of the head reaches down. Go ahead and do that one or two more times for yourself, just letting that spine unwind in what are called flexion and extension. And then come right back to your neutral. Keep your hips over your knees and start to walk your hands forward. Take the full width of your mat for this first one. We have not done a lot of shoulder opening yet. Right? And you're like, even if you're like, but I can do it. I have really open, strong shoulders. You know, again, you might just work in that kind of gentler way to start to get the body in. It'll still get to those places, right? Push, get, push down through the tops of your feet where your shoelaces would be. Push down through your knees. Push down through your hands, especially your index finger and your thumb. As you push a little forward with the hands, can your hips move just a little further back and can the spine lengthen even a touch more? Take one more breath from there. And then walk your hands back. And you're going to go ahead, you can leave the legs where they are, or you can separate the knees, toes together to move into a child's pose. Forehead's going to come down. I'm going to leave mine lifted just so you can hear my voice a little bit better, right? But you could be on fist pillows or on the ground with your forehead. And then just pause there. You might let your hips rock a little bit from side to side just to coax them open, so to speak. And then keep your hips in the middle. And then we're gonna walk our hands a little over to the right, reaching the left arm further away. And we're gonna walk through center. We'll walk over to the left and we'll reach that right hand further away. And we'll do that one more time, walking through the center. Go ahead and walk over to the right and then reach that left arm forward and away. Walking through center over to the left, reaching that right arm forward and away. And then come back to the center. Again, you might take the full width of the mat today, pushing the palms and the finger pads down. We're going to transition to downward dog. So come up on the hands and knees, curl the toes under, and make your way back into downward dog. Feel free, especially since we're just opening the muscles, to bend one knee and straighten another. I find that very helpful for opening calf muscles. And then bend the knees and lift the heels a little bit and maybe sway the hips a little bit from right to left. And see if you can't lengthen any of that musculature in the side or the side back body. Back to center. Lengthen your spine as much as you can. And then maybe you start to straighten the legs a little or drop the heels. But the straight legs is the last concern in downward dog, as far as I'm concerned anyway. Right? Take a breath. We want them active so they help lengthen the spine, but they don't have to be straight. From there, you're going to go ahead, you're going to inhale the right leg up into the air behind you and bring it forward between the hands. Left knee is going to come down, uncurl the toes, I'm going to tuck my shirt and I'm losing my shirt, and inhale, come all up. Interlace the hands if it's available. You can make your little um, temple and reach the index fingers over to the right. You'll notice we're going through the movements of the spine a lot, right? Inhale back to center, and then we're going to twist. We're going to reach the right hand behind us, the left finger tips forward, and then maybe the left hand comes down to the ground, and we move into our more classical twist that we're familiar with. Take a breath, and bring the hand down. Step back to downward facing dog, and breathe. Inhale, the left leg up into the air behind you. 
and bring it forward between the hands. Right knee's going to come down and come on up into low lunge. Again, feel free to make that interlace and the index fingers pointing up. And then you're going to lean over to the left. And breathe. Lateral stretch to the left. Come back to center. Now split the hands. The left hand reaches back. The right hand reaches forward. You can stay there, but you might bring that right hand down and use the pressure of the right hand pushing into the floor to rotate the ribs into the twist even a little more. They're both beautiful. They're just different, right? And take a breath from there, feeling that twist, twisting to the left. And bringing the hand down, stepping back to downward facing dog, and breathing. No matter what time of day it is for you and how much you move your body today, just think of this as just kind of waking up the body a little bit. Take a breath. Now we're going to come forward into push-up, top of a push-up, a plank, right? And then we're going to come down to our bellies. So come forward on the toes, feel free to bring the knees down or not. Come all the way down to the earth. And then inhale up into low cobra. Feet push down, thighs lift. Nothing unusual here, all the usual suspects. And exhale, come on down. Press into the tops of the feet. Inhale, shoulder blades down the back. Move those elbows in. Imagine me pulling your elbows back to your foot side of your mat. Lengthen the crown of the head. And come on down. Maybe interlace the hands behind you or interlock the thumbs or grab a strap or palms next to each, the side body, uh, palms facing in, right? And then reach the knuckles back. And let that lift the shoulders and the chest and the head. Reach the crown of the head forward. Take an inhale. And come down enough to change the interlace of the fingers. And then right off the bat again, we're going to reach those fingers back. My feet are still pushing down. My thighs are still lifting. My belly is toning. Maybe I reach my feet up a little bit, and then I lengthen my entire body as much as I can in two directions. Take a breath, and exhale. Bring the feet down. Bring the palms down next to the low floating ribs. Leave the knees down. Tone the belly up. Push and straighten the arms. Half plank. And exhale back, downward facing dog. Breathe. Inhale the right leg up into the air behind you and step it forward between the hands. Now this time you're going to turn towards the left side of the mat. So you're just going to turn your feet and your body until you're long, uh, facing the long edge of the mat. Turn your feet up to about a 45 and then go ahead and bend one knee, straightening the other leg. I'm demonstrating if it doesn't make sense. Come back to your center and go to the other side. You could be using blocks underneath your hands right now. Or be next to a coffee table and just walk across the coffee table with your hands. But go ahead and go through this just a couple of times, a few times. Say hi to those inner groin a little bit. Now I don't want to work as too strong, but if you want just a little bit of strength, you're going to bring your upper body up and you're going to do the same move without using your hands to walk yourself back and forth. So now we're bearing, right? We're load bearing. We're, we're bearing a little more weight. Are you breathing? Sorry I'm yelling at you. I have to use the yelling voice in this vacuous space. I don't know what's happening with all my technology. And then go ahead and finish that out. Come back to center. You're going to walk your feet in a little wider than hip distance, about what would be the width of the mat if you were standing facing the short side. And now we're going to try and squat down. You can just put your hands on your thighs and come into Malasana. And you see I just adjusted my feet, I was a little too wide, so feel free to make adjustments, yeah? And then from there you're going to try to walk your hands out in front of you. Remember, you can be sitting on blocks or coffee tables or chairs if that's a way you can access this position, yeah? And we're going to go into that twist again. So you're going to reach your right hand, just my, my arms are inside my legs. I just straighten my right arm and I bring my hand down wherever the heck it touches. And I'm going to reach that left arm back and up. It might not be very big at all, and that's okay. And bring that left arm inside the left leg. Reach the left arm out and down. Reach the right arm up. So let's try to add one breath, one movement like we've been doing with some of our stuff. Bringing that in. Right arm comes into place. And inhale, left arm reaches up into the twist. And bring that down. And in. Other side, moving into that twist. And then go ahead and bring the hands down. You can bring the buttocks down and come sitting down. 
one shin in front of the other. Inhale, get tall. And then from there, just a couple of cat cows again. So reach the chest forward and move the spine into extension. Exhale, pull the belly back and move the spine into flexion. Inhale, shoulder blades down the back, chest forward. Exhale, pull the belly back. If we correlated this to the yoga names from when we're on hands and knees, when our body goes into that arch, right, our low back, and it's extension, that would be called cow, and when we pull the belly back, and we round the spine into flexion, that would be called cat. We're gonna do one more of those. And then come into neutral, neither flexion nor extension. And this time we're not gonna move forward on the hands and knees, but we're gonna use this for the forward fold of the stretch. So slowly walk one hand forward and then the other. Until you're like, oh, you mean my outer buttocks? And I'm like, yeah. And then usually whatever shin you have in front, I don't think I call the shin out, whatever shin you have in front, that outer hip is the one talking often, right? Now, maybe you walk yourself over to the right, reaching the left hand further away, and back to center, and over to the left, reaching that right hand forward. You can do that again if that felt really good. Adding breath if you want, inhaling through center, exhaling over to the sides. And then coming back through center, inhale, come up just a little bit, reaching that chest forward. Tone the belly and buttocks bones down. Come in for just about two breaths, softening the body into that stretch in stillness. Inhale the chest forward to come up. Put the other shin in front. Get really tall. And again, I'm going to start to gently walk my hands one at a time a little forward until I feel the beginning of that stretch. You don't have to go to the edge of it right off the bat, right? You can just be like, oh, yep, that's it. And then I might add that walking. This time, let's go over to the left first and reach the right arm away. And then back to your center, and you'll move to the right, reaching the left arm away. And again, if that felt good, inhale neutral, and exhale to the left. Inhale neutral, and exhale over to your right. Coming back to your center, inhale, come up just a little bit, lengthen, and then fold out over and pause and just take a moment in softness. Check in and soften that neck. The necks get tense, really, really tense in forward folds for a lot of my friends. I say that only because I see it when I teach, yeah? Inhale that chest forward and come on up. Let those legs come out in front of you. Let's say hi to our hamstrings. Lengthen through the spine. Feel free to bend the knees or sit upon something. And then exhale, starting to fold out. As if I could lay down my belly, and then my low floating ribs, and then my chest, right? And slowly making my way towards my thighs. Pulling those pinky toe edges back to the outer hips. Pushing the heels forward. Those little refinements, if they don't work for you, don't do them. But for many human bodies, these little refinements that I add in, it's not that you have to do it perfectly, it's it often changes the stretch for us and hopefully, hopefully gets us right into the belly of that. Some of us are like, nope, just behind my knees. Well, you've got some tight backs to your knees and, and we might need to open that up a little before we can find the hamstrings. Inhale, reach the chest forward and come on up. We're gonna come onto our backs. So you can move your buttocks a little forward if necessary so that you don't knock your noggin on the way down. A little bit of core if and you want it. And once you get onto your back, you're going to tee your arms out, walk your feet wider than your hips, no wider than the edge of the mat, something in that realm, and then windshield wipers. So my feet don't move, right? They rock from side to side, but it's really just that windshield wipering of the, of the shin bones, yeah? And of course, the rest of the body follows into it. We're moving into a twist. You can always turn your head the opposite way of the knees so that the twist moves through the entirety of the spine. Go ahead and do about one more of those, 
And when you feel complete, you'll bring your knees back up. Walk the feet in. Let's hug our right knee in and just give it a little squeeze. Inhale. And with an exhale, pull your belly down into cat and pull your body up into a tight little ball. Bring the right foot down. It's nothing huge. Remember, I'm, it's a cooling kind of a day. Bring the left leg in. Hug it in. Take an inhale. With an exhale, push that belly down. Flatten the low back into the earth and the cat. And maybe you pull up into a little tight ball. And bring the upper body down. Leave the left leg in. We're going to do both legs now. Both legs coming in. Take an inhale. And with an exhale, pull the belly down. That's the center point of this movement in, right? So as I flatten my low back into the earth, it might give me enough juju, juice, energy to curl up in a tight little ball. Come on. Find soft. Take a nap. Inhale. And exhale. Come on down and start to make your way out into Shavasana. That can be whatever version you'd like today. Maybe it's shins up on a chair or a blanket rolled under your knees, feet on the ground, knees bent. And don't look at me and see what I'm doing and assume that's what's best for you. Once you find that soft, that well, I'll say once you find the position, look for that soft body, right? Trying to release all the musculature. And we'll be here for about another minute. So maybe just coming to the breath and, and focusing on that soft belly breath. You might even count it. And one minute for many of us is anywhere from five to ten breaths. Right, eight to ten when they're longer and deeper, but you know, some of us don't have lung capacity or might be still breathing a little more rapidly. If the breath, uh, if the mind moves somewhere else, bring the mind back to the breath. <clears throat> Feel free to add in any of those kind of movements or stre stretches. <laughs> she says that she owns just to get yourself back in your body. I'm going to suggest going through the fetal position. Anytime we get to that shavasana place, we want to try and keep that softness we cultivated. But we will eventually eat in an upright posture. And just checking in. Hopefully feel like we moved a little bit. If we have a little bit of energy. If we were low energy from heat or whatever was going on. Might have at least didn't use any, uh, uh, so much we depleted you. Hopefully you don't feel too hot. And just keep checking in throughout the day. And I'll try to do a post, I've done it uh, most summers, but I'll do a post soon about hydration and natural electrolytes and how helpful that can be during this season. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. Inhale. Exhale, bow your head in. Taking just a moment of gratitude for this wonderful practice that's been handed down for generations. And, uh, and I've got some configuration of many different schools inside me that I bring to you. Namaste. Have a wonderful day, friends, wherever you are in your day.